The Pride Channel's coverage of St. Pete Pride 2015 is brought to you by Cityside Lounge in South Tampa, where good friends meet, and by many of Tampa Bay and Palm Harbor, Florida. It is my pleasure to introduce our guest of honor. Like I don't know anything about him, but I'm going to read this anyway. <laughs> Since 2001, Ross Matthews has been a popular television personality, host, and pop culture expert. I can just come out. You don't have to read the whole thing. Hi. I'll just come out. Hi. I love you it's for that. It's too long. I love hi, honey. Hi, hi, hi. Hi, hi, hi. Hello, St. Pete. Hi. Isn't it good in person? Hi. Take a <laughs> I'm just kidding. Hi. Everybody, I'm so excited to meet you all. I'm gonna stay and take pictures with whoever wants. We can meet, we can hug, anything you want. We can make out a little bit if you want to. Oh, I have a rule of thumb about that. I'm a sure that. thing. <laughs> Hi. My rule of thumb about that is it costs money. Oh, really? Costs well, how much do I have to pay you? <laughs> oh, <well. laughs> Just kidding. Hi. Listen, I'm so happy to be here and happy Pride, everybody. Woo! Happy Pride. And thank to Macy's, what an extraordinary thing they're doing, backing the community, and what a time, you know, the yes. Supreme Court right now on the precipice, maybe making marriage equality the law of the land, honey, who knows, and it's because you guys come together, and Corey, thank you for being so nice to me. Yay, Corey! Wait, it's too early in the game. For no, but you were nice backstage, that's the truth. <laughs> All right, here's what you want to do. Go. We, want, we would like for you to tell us about your background, Okay. and then let us know why you wanted to get involved in television. Well, I grew up in a little farm town, Mount Vernon, Washington. Yeah. Anyone heard of it? Yeah, true. And uh, I worked in the spinach fields. I sold berries. I worked on a conveyor belt at a bulb factory. And all the time I would think about, I want to be at talking to the celebrities. You know, I used to, for the, all the award shows, put down an old towel. It was a red towel I got at Salvation Army. And I would put it on the front porch and my friends would come over. My mom would take pictures of us, you know. And uh, I just had laser focus and fought, fought, fought. And now guess what? I'm on the red carpets at the real Oscars. But it's all about, um, you know, Hollywood is this idea and this tangible place and I wanted to feel it. You know, I wanted to see it. And it's just as good as you imagine. It really is. Great, great, great. Now. Yes? Who are some of your role models? Emma. Well, growing up, some of my role models, uh, you know, I would rush home from from TV or from school to watch Rosie O'Donnell on TV. Do you remember the old Rosie O'Donnell show? I just love that show. She was uh, she was had the job I wanted. She, you know, was I kind of felt like her. It turns out because she was a big lesbian and I was a big homo, but it, <laughs> I just kind of felt like uh, you know we're the same kind of person. And now in adulthood, you know the. I think my role model is the person that I think I can be if I try really hard. I feel like I'm always chasing that, you know? My goal weight. <laughs> but whatever, you gotta love yourself. And, uh, and the accomplishments that I, I want to be, the person that I think is my potential. I'm constantly looking up to that person and trying to achieve that. Oh. Very cool. Yeah. You know. That's the way to live. It really Honey, is. you don't have to cheer. It's gonna happen. <laughs> you and me. <laughs> oh no, you don't want that one. Oh, I don't want that one. I know her very well. <laughs> <laughs> Good to me. You like no. what? Mm, what? We're gonna be sweet. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> what does pride mean to you, and how do you live a life of pride every day? Well, I live a life of pride every day by just sort of being unapologetically myself. You know, I think the days of wanting to be tolerated are so old school. Now, honey, it is celebrate me, love me. And I think that goes for everybody, you know? And I never had the luxury of living in the closet, because, honey, no closet is going <laughs> to... Um, so I've just been authentic forever and it, it's been a burden because it's been hard but it's been such a luxury because I have nothing to hide you know what I mean I hope that for everybody where you don't have to apologize for who you are I love that mm. and I try to tell other people coming up all the time in our community that that's very important yeah. to just be who you are and stay true to it and other people will appreciate it it's true I think so I sound like a preacher, but anyway. <laughs> what topics within the LGBT community are most important to you? Well, you know, I, I get emails from a lot of people writing in saying, like, I'm a little kid in a little town, and I don't see a lot of people like me, and I don't know if I fit in, and I understand. So one thing we want to make sure we tell everybody is if you don't see someone like you when you look out your front window, 
Uh, you should know that there's never been a better time to be LGBTQ than 2015. You know, no matter where you are, with just a little bit of effort, you can find a group of people who will accept you with open arms. And some kids don't know that, you know, because they don't see it. I grew up in a time when you couldn't point at TV or on the media and see someone like you. I didn't know what it was going to be like being a grown-up, openly gay uh, adult. Because, and I think a lot of you can relate to that. Now think about kids, whether they're trans or they're gay or they're straight or they're fat or they're white or they're bald, you know, whatever. They can point and say, oh look, there's someone representing me. I can be that, you know, and I think that's important. Thank you. Yeah, you. you're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. They like you. <laughs> What's the most important thing that you want people to take away from this conversation today? Uh, uh, just pretty much like how good looking I am in person is the most important part. No, I think it's good. You know, you are the people who are making this cultural shift. You know, 10 years ago, 30 something percent of Americans believed in marriage equality. Now it's 60 something percent. 10 years ago, I started speaking with the human rights campaign. Zero states had marriage equality. Now it's 37 and Guam. We got Guam, okay? <laughs> If we can get Guam, we can get the other 13 states, don't you think? Yeah. Uh, and it's because of uh, people like you. And you ask, what do I want people to take away from this? Is that you guys being loud and proud and talking to your friends and your neighbors, you straight outliers who come here and support us, you are changing the culture. This is a time of change and it's working and it's because of you. So keep it up. That's what I want you to take away. And, and how really good looking I am in person. And how it's weird. This sort of sexual chemistry we all have. Okay, so listen. Don't forget, he's really, really good looking in person. Yeah. <laughs> Probably want to write that down or put a note in your phone or something. I yeah. took your